Hey, this is Hans from Dakota Angler and Outfitter in Rapid City, South Dakota. Today we're going to tie an Eastern European style tungsten emerging nymph um, based on some of the nymphs I saw in a cool book called Fly Fishing and Fly Tying 2 uh, put out by some Czech fly tires. And what we've got in here is we've got a tungsten bead and we've got a Daiichi 1560 uh, size 18 hook. I'm going to start some 70 denier thread right behind the bead. Trim off my excess. And I'm going to tie in three micro fibbits for tails. Those are a little long. I'm just going to cut them back. I like to tie the tails in and then tie them down as they go back. Dropped a couple of them there. I'll wrap back to the bend. Got the tails tied in now. Next we'll tie in some micro tubing. I'm doing all of micro tubing. You could do any color you wanted, black or do a kind of 3D effect with the clear tubing over an underbody of whatever color thread you wanted to shine through. I made an angled cut where I tied that in and that helps give a a taper when you tie in the micro tubing. Just wrap that micro tubing for the body. Leave a little room behind the bead, a couple wraps worth of microtubing distance wise. Tie that off. I'm going to trim off my excess. And now we're going to put in a little emerging wing. What I've got is a clump of gray ice dubbing. You could also use pearl ice dubbing here or tan ice dubbing works good too. What I'm going to do is we're not going to actually use this for dubbing. We're going to use it for a little emerging wing like you would on an RS2. I just kind of balled that up. I'm going to trim these ends even. So I got I just trim these ends a little bit so that they're nice and even. I've got my little clump of ice dubbing here and I'm right behind the bead. I'm going to tie that down. See I've got that clump of ice dubbing on the back. Now I can go in and trim that as a little emerging mayfly wing. Just like you would on an RS2. And now we're going to do a little bit of a thorax with some kind of black natural dubbing or um, you could even use a synthetic here. Got to see what's handy here. I got a gigantic mess on my fly tying bench. Which is normal for me. There we go. I'll do a little darker colored nature spirit emergence dubbing. Just dub a ball. We have some wild fibers there. Go ahead and trim those down. Oops. Chomp the bead with my scissor there. Now, we'll just do a three turn whip finish right behind the bead. Tighten that down. Trim off the thread. And there you have a simple but very effective little nymph. I was fishing these the other day on a guide trip and there was some little P PMD or sulfurs or something coming off. Um, I don't know quite what they are yet. I better spend some time trying to identify that. But 
this fly worked really, really well as a dropper. Uh, what we were fishing was a two fly drop, or well, yeah, it was a two fly dropper rig. It was kind of a, a bear to cast, but we had a flying ant pattern. And then we had two nymphs like this as droppers, two different colors. I was fishing one brown and one olive. We got some really nice fish on these nymphs. They're simple to tie. They've got some nice flash in the water and and you know they're easy enough to tie that you can tie up a lot of different colors so you've got something you can be changing up on. So tie up a few of these. You'll be able to fish them through the summer. It'll be a great fall pattern for betas hatches in the fall too. Great fly is fished as a dropper off a of dry, but you can also fish it dimp, uh, deep in a, in a two fly nymph rig as well. Again, I'm Hans from Dakota Angler and Outfitter in Rapid City, South Dakota, and we just finished tying a tungsten quill nymph.